Hello and welcome to episode 14 of my series as I build through the terrain tutorials in the battle games in Middle Earth magazines. Episode 14, we're getting there, we've only got another 70 something to go. If you're not yet a subscriber and you enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you click the bell, if you ding the bell, um, you can select all there and then YouTube will tell you whenever one of my videos goes live. This week is a continuation of the previous episode in a sense. Last time we looked at river sections and I had great fun. It was a really enjoyable build. This week we're going to be looking at bridges and I have all sorts of ideas of what I'm going to do for my slightly different build, not necessarily more advanced. In addition, I have, not to hand, I did have it to hand, I don't know, I have the section that I started last time round using Luke's modelling compound for the banks. And I'm going to get that finished as part of this just so you can see it and also so that it's included in my river length. Uh, it didn't work quite as well as I wanted to because I think I've got a bad batch. Uh, it didn't dry very quick so I just left it and didn't bother completing it. So it's basically at the stage just after the uh, mix has been put on. So anyway, that's enough rambling for the intro. I will now get the camera pointed down and we'll have a look at the terrain tutorial and get started. So, making bridges. The lands of Middle Earth are crisscrossed with great rivers that separate regions and kingdoms. In this pack, we show you how to make bridges to span your rivers, providing important strategic crossing points for your models. Bridges come in a variety of types and styles from sturdy stone dwarven bridges to elegant ornate elvish ones. In this pack we demonstrate how to make a simple wooden crossing that would not look out of place in the Shire, Rohan or the wilds of Middle Earth. The bridge will look great as part of the river from last pack's modelling workshop and is constructed applying many of the same techniques. Using only basic materials from your growing collection, there we are, you will find that making bridges is simple and effective. So as I said, what we're going to do is we are going to follow basically the same uh, uh, construction techniques we did last time um, and uh, I'm going to make this bridge. I I'm going to probably skip a fair a number of the processes that I filmed for the last one, so actually making the river base etc. Um, I'm going to get that to a stage um, and then I'll come back one once I've got that to a stage. But to clarify what you need, is the um, either 5mm hardboard foam card or thick mounting board. I'm going to do this on cardboard again. Corrugated packing card, plaster filler, modelling sand gravel and flock, stones and pebbles, PVA glue, modelling or coping saw, a sharp modelling knife, black, blue, white, brown, yellow and green acrylic paints, a balsa wood sheet, lollipop sticks and sandpaper. Now there are some alternatives to lollipop sticks. You can use tongue depressors, which is what I will be using because I have packs of them. Um, but yeah, that's the materials. So what I'll do is I am going to do step one, which is basically from last week. So I'll read it out, I'll just get it done, and I'll come back um, when, I, when I've got it to a state. The base is made from hardboard, or cardboard, in almost exactly the same way as the base for the Ford in the last pack. Mark out a base section, the same width as your river sections. Now, I still have my little template that I made, so these are the widths of the banks, this is the width of the water so it can join up. Um, and m increase the width of the section in the middle so that it is slightly wider than the Ford's base. So we're going to make it quite wide. So it's going to go, going to be quite a kind of like uh, overly kind of um, set of shape. Once you've cut out the basic shape, sand down the rough edges with sandpaper. Then build up the banks by sticking corrugated card along the long edges with PVA glue um, and maybe build up the centre a little higher is what it's saying. So leave the card banks to dry thoroughly and then fill them in with plaster filler, uh, which is what I'll do in the same way as the last pack. In addition, however, you will need to fill the gaps in the second level of card. Try to create a smooth gradient between the two layers, disguising the join. When the filler is still wet, add a few details such as stones, gravel and bristle reeds, which I will do this time. I didn't last time, but I will do this time. I'm not going to do reeds. I might do reeds. Don't know. So yeah, so I'll come back when I've finished doing step one. As part of the advanced build, and possibly the only thing of the different build that I do, uh, I have a huge idea, which sadly this week has been absolutely insane and I'm probably not going to get time which is a real pain in the backside but never mind that's what it is. What I'd like to do is do some river sections basically the same as what I did last week. I'd also do a river and I'd do a few other ideas so tributaries and what have you um, but I'm going to do it in 20 millimeters so here I have one of my little 20 millimeter this is actually a German uh, general, general, German senior leader for chain of command 
Um, so I'm going to do these at a smaller scale and I'm going to show how I'm going to go about making them in roughly the same way as I did for the last week but it, um, it's going to be basically taking uh, into account all the mistakes I made and the learning that I've done. So for the base I have my pedigree chum boxes which I really like. They're thin as you can see but it's good solid card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make out my template. That is something which I'll do the same. So I'm going to make out the template now for the standard river width. And the standard river width is basically going to be, the, the, the whole of the board is basically going to be like this. So the whole of each section is going to be about this, um, this size, which is, if you're interested, um, that is uh, 19 centimeters. So I might make it a bit shorter, but that's going to be the width. So I might do it slightly shorter. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then what I'll do is I will bring you along whenever I do something that's different, that shows off some learning that I did last week, last video. Um, and uh, we can basically do something that, while they, they, I was very pleased with the ones last week, I did learn a lot and I'd like to do these uh, slightly better. So I'll be back shortly to show you what I've got. I've been trucking away working on this um, and just thought, you know what, I'll actually uh, do a, f a short segment to show you some of the ways I'm doing it slightly differently. So I'm in the middle of making a curve section, which is here. And what you can see at the end is that what I'm not doing, what it did, what I did last time on the previous build, where I'm putting the entire bank on, what I'm actually doing is just putting in each end point where it joins, because that will make it much more flexible for me in the middle. And also it just makes it quicker and easier and less painful for me when I'm doing curves and working out, having to work out how that actually looks. So what I'm doing is I'm making these little uh, sections one centimeter by one centimeter. I'm using the same card as I'm using for the entire build. So I'll mark, a one centimetre deep line. I'll tell you what, let's quickly zoom that in a little bit more so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so I've done that one centimetre deep. What I'll now do is come along with my ruler and mark off what one centimetre squares where they will be. There we are. Then take my safety ruler and cut down the long length. like so, done. So what we now have is we now have our little strip one centimeter deep, which I will now slice up into squares, like so. Okay, and to keep this short, I'll only cut two off because I need two for what I'm doing right now. What we now have is we now have this section. So I've made myself a template. Here is the template, and this has two sides to it. This side is that one centimeter square sticking out, which is five mil in from each edge, which is what I want to do. And this side has the five mil from each edge. So I can do whatever drawing or whatever shapes I want to straight away onto the cardboard. And as you can see here, that there is actually perfectly aligned so that when they meet up, uh, I'll be able to put these little one centimeter section there and there and that will be perfect. So I will now grab some glue which I have over here. Just normal white glue, PVA. And then we'll stick each of these down and that's that. And this is how I'm working. So I'm working in very short sections as you can see as well. And not as wide as the previous one but it's supposed to be 20 mil. So if you have a look at this guy, it's not the widest river in the world, but it certainly isn't one you can jump. So it's gonna be an interesting um, a challenge for my little miniatures to get across when I use it. So that's one of my curves. Um, I've also made some curves going the other way. And just now I've had a lot of fun making a Y, so a splitting river, and that's gonna be a lot of fun for me to do. So this is the bank here, this is the bank here, and down here. So I'll have a lot of fun doing that one there. And a bunch of straight ones and what have you. Um, I'm about to do some actual turning ones rather than just these wheels. I'm actually going to do some corners which will be the same as in the previous videos. But that's the difference. That's one of the first differences that I wanted to show you between each of the videos. 
I'm not bothering to build up the entire bank. I'm going to build the bank up when I do my filler step and I'll be able to do it much more flexibly and much more quickly, which is obviously important. So there we are. I'm nearly time for wrapping up this evening as well. I'm going to maybe do, do a couple more sections and then I'll be done. Um, but there we are. I hope that's uh, proven useful. I've made many sections of smaller river, some of this size, some of the smaller size, and I've made a couple of joining bits as well. So we can go from the wider to the narrower, which is quite cool. So I'll be able to make some quite interesting waterways. What I'm going to do is very quickly show you, though it is basically the same as last time as well, I'm going to make use of filler for this. You can see I've done one already just to test, test it out. And the idea is, is that we can go smooth from the corner, from the edge even. That's why I've done these inset 5 mil, And then we can build the bank up how we want to without having to have any cardboard in there. Now, of course, this means that you're going to use slightly more filler for this. Um, if you find it sticking a bit, just add a little bit of water to your palette knife and it will smooth out much easier. There we are. So yeah, so of course what this will mean is that you are actually using a little more filler, but for something this size it's negligible. And the fact that it gives you that ease to make the banks exactly how you want without having to worry about the presence of cardboard, I think is a quite a win. So we will build that up on all of these. I will just do this one side on camera just to show you how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to carry on and do the rest. The, uh, the main build is progressing. Um, probably can start actually the, uh, the meat of the main build very soon. Um, my super duper idea for this video has had to be shelved from lack of time. It's been a bit of a hectic time in my private life and I just haven't been able to get started on it and I don't want to rush it and I don't want to put myself under pressure. So I will do that as a separate project, um, not as part of this build and I'm really looking forward to it. I've done the research, so um, I know I can build it, but I do just need to have the time to, to get dedicate to it. So anyway, I'm gonna go through now and do the uh, banks like that on all of them. And I have quite a pile, so this could take me a while. There's some more of them and there's more than that. So yes, and I'll be back shortly with the next step. Let's have a go at the next step of the making bridges, which is the support struts, the official one. So you can see here that I've got this to a undercoated state, and uh, that's not exactly what you see in the picture uh, for various reasons, one of which is uh, I didn't read the instructions. The other one is I'm undecided whether I'm going to undercoat my wood or not. But anyway, we'll come to that shortly. So step two is the support struts. To begin with, cut two strips of balsa wood. Now my balsa wood ain't wide enough for my river. So I can't use the balsa wood. So what I've got is I've got these tongue depressors, which I bought from eBay and I'll, or Amazon or something. I'll try and remember to uh, put a link in the description below, but they're lollipop sticks or whatever. Um, and I'm gonna cut those to size. They're going to span the river nicely, as you can see. They're a little wide at the moment, um, but that's fine. I can trim them down using my uh, standing knife and then glue them in place. Um, and that's what it says to do next. Now, one thing I am a little kind of confused by is the fact that I haven't yet uh, painted the actual water effects and it's going to be very difficult to paint the water effects underneath these struts. So what I might do is trim these to size, then do the water, which is obviously something I've done before and I'm doing exactly the same way, mixing the blue and the green and, and doing the highlights and bringing it up to the top green. Um, and then I'll come back and actually st stick these down. But I thought I'd quickly show you how I'm going to do that. So first of all, we're going to need to um, split this so very, very carefully, and I don't know whether I'm able to get this easily in shot because of where my camera is, um, but because these have a grain, they're quite easy to do this, to, to cut them and trim them to width. There we are. And then we can trim the other side. And what we're looking for is about a centimeter width. It doesn't have to be exact, but with my squares on my cutting board, I can certainly be accurate enough. So there we are. We now have a one centimeter wide strip. And what I'm going to do is grab a pencil and work out exactly how long I want this to be. And then I'll cut the ends off and then we'll be done. 
And as I say, what I'll do is I will go and sort the watercolour underneath and then um, and then come back to show you how I'm going to glue this. I've actually not got that in shot. Let me bring across a little bit. That's better. So I've measured that out. Um, cutting across the grain is slightly more complex, or not complex, slightly less easy. Just do it in multiple shallow, gentle cuts and you'll cut quite accurately. There we are. Don't try and do it all at once. And don't worry if what part of it cuts and part of it doesn't. Just set several gentle score marks and eventually you will get through the wood without splitting it and it'll be fine. So there we are. Okay, so that's the one side. So I'm going to do the same with the other side now. So again, we will split it carefully. Not pulling too hard because you're cutting towards yourself. There we are, let's split that. And then to get the width, I've got that roughly here on my squares. So I can again very carefully draw down towards me in a roughly straight line. There we are. And then we will mark across again. And what it says is that it wants to be about five centimeters apart. So I'll grab my short ruler and that will be about right. So let's cut one end off. Again, you do this just very gently. You're not looking at doing it in one turn. If you get bored, you can short circuit that. So that's gonna go across about there. So we're gonna to want to cut this around there again. So, so there we are, that's that. I will now do the water colors um, on these and also on the Luke's APS one that I'm doing, which has also got to the same stage um, and I'll show you what that looks like. But yeah, it doesn't look much different to any of the others, to be honest. Much for muchness. Someone asked me which I would prefer to use the, uh, in the comments on the previous video, whether I'd prefer to use the filler or whether I'd prefer to use Luke's APS. And I did say Luke's APS because I like using it. But having now spent a lot of time, and I'm actually working, as you can see, I've got a lot of these smaller scale ones done. The, the filler is really easy to use and dries very, very, very quickly. And it doesn't have, as I said, I think I maybe got a bad batch, but it doesn't have that issue with the batch. So I'm actually really enjoying using the filler. So I'm, I'm don't know, is the answer. Right, so there's that. Let's get some water effects done. And I'll be back for step three, planking the bridge very shortly. Next up, I have all of these smaller scale um, of the river sections that I'm about to do my sand um, texturing on. So I thought I'd bring you along just for the first one and then I'll get the rest done off camera because it's going to be very much of muchness. Now the way that I'm doing this is very similar to how I did on the original ones. So we're going to paint neat PVA over the banks and down just to the very edge of the banks. So not all the way across because I want these to look like relatively deep rivers. If it was going to be a shallow river, and maybe I'll do one or two shallow sections as well, then what you'd do is you would actually have it so that you had sand and gravel visible across the entire entirety of the uh, of the river section. But certainly on this one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, I'm just gonna do the fine sand and stick it down over the over the banks. So there we are, you can see I'm also picking up some, some green paint, which is on my, uh, on my palette. So behind me here, I have two buckets. I have a bucket of builder sand number three, which is a larger mix, which is the larger stones. And I'm just gonna put a couple of those in, not too many, bearing in mind that this is supposed to be a, um, a different scale. This is a 20 millimeter figures. So you don't want to have so if it's too large because things will fall over, they won't be able to stand on them. So we'll just put a couple of these in just for some interest. And then for the rest, we'll take my finest sand and sprinkle that on. And you can see that I'm doing this over a, 
uh, over a newspaper to catch any excess. But if you're frugal and careful, you shouldn't have too much overspill. There we are. And then we'll do the other side. So it's simple as that. So I'm going to do that. Watch a YouTube video, currently watching Neil from Real Terrain Hurry's latest opus. Makes my production skills look very, very limited. But hey, I don't have have many hundred thousand viewers. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, there we are. So that'll do. I'll let that to dry and I'm going to carry on and do all of the rest of these in exactly the same way. Over here we have one that's going to be a Ford, so that will be shallower, so that'll have some uh, going across, but the rest of them will pretty much be done like this. I'll be back later with the next step. It's time for me to experience the joy of um, balsa wood again. So we're on to the final step, finally. <laughs> final step, finally. So let me go to in the magazine, which I didn't have ready to hand because I'm an idiot. Um, and let's read it. So, uh, planking the bridge. The bridge is made from strips of balsa wood cut to look like rough wooden planks. Cut lots of smaller strips of wood into approximately the same width, each long enough to overlap the supports throughout slightly. Because these will cover the middle section of a bridge, you might find it easy to undercoat the wood and the river base separately before sticking it together. So what I've done is I've done the work on the uh, on the river base, as you can see. Um, I've not flocked yet because I'm going to flock around the bridge, but I've done all the painting, including uh, putting the light, uh, the grey, the brown wash over the over the black and everything like that. Um, and what I am going to do is build the wooden planks separately and, and from this so that I can stain it all top and bottom. So you're going to glue these together. You are aiming to get a slight overhang each side of the support struts. If you like, you can carve notches along the edges of your planks as described in PAX 13. I hate to remember that, vid, that, that one, PAX 13's modelling workshop. To make your planks look more weathered or realistic before sticking them down. So, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're, we're going to put these planks on now, uh, cut them out, stick them on, and uh, do it separately. So I have my balsa wood, as you can see, and what it says to do is to put these about five centimeters apart. So what we're going to do is using the uh, the measurements on my mat. That's five centimeters apart. So what we're then going to do is have a look at this and that unfortunately obviously clearly is going to mean that I'm going to have to cut to this more than once in more than one dimension. So first of all we're going to work out how wide we're going to have that and I think if we have that six centimeters there or thereabouts it's going to have a little bit of an overhang on each side and it's going to look fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this bit of balsa wood down to six centimeters wide and again I can use my cutting mat, which you can't see because I went out of shot. I can use my cutting mat to go th three, three, there we are, so that's about six. And we can slice easily down that. Now because that was done with the um, grain, it was easy. This next bit is not going to be as easy. And what I'm going to need to do is make sure that I do this in multiple gentle cuts. So not trying to cut through all at once. If I do that, then I will split the wood. And I can show you, but I don't want to waste the wood because this stuff is not the easiest to get hold of here in Bulgaria. So there's the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a bunch of planks that are about this size. And when I've done that, I will come back with the next step because there's no point in you watching and me filming such a repetitive process. I've cut out a load of those and I'm happy with how they look so I'm now going to glue them in place and you can see that they fit really nicely across the river and they're a good width. So we're going to use PVA for this, nothing advanced, nothing special, drop that onto my broken nail plate. <laughs> I'm going to have to pick up a new plate tomorrow, got it on my shopping list along with a few other bits and pieces and what we'll do is we'll simply come along and dab the PVA on the bottom of the, of the um, of the cross piece, drop it because I'm clumsy and I'm tired, and I am tired. And then we will um, clamp that. Actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm then going to clamp that in place, do the top one, clamp that, and then I can position everything in the middle 
and move it actually out of the way. So we'll remove most of these. I should have probably moved them. It probably doesn't matter if it gets knocked. The order of them doesn't matter in the slightest. I just want to make sure that we've got this in the right place. So I can put a clamp on this. Ta-da. Break it, but it doesn't matter because we know exactly where it's going to go now because we've got the glue in place, we've marked it, so we can put a clamp there. It needs to overlap a little bit. There we are. And now I can, oh, I'm not in shot, apologies. And now I can um, continue building that by doing the same technique, dropping them in. And what I'll actually do is clamp the other end as well and then we should be good to go. I'll do this off camera because it's all going to be the same. So we'll pop a clamp on there, hold it in place, one more clamp and then we'll have a nice easy to use, easy to make bridge without too much faffing around and struggling with it on the, on there. So there we are, let's fill those gaps in and we're done. You can tell I'm tired because when I'm tired, I don't know about you guys and girls, but when you're tired, do you get dramatically clumsy and drop everything? Because I do, and you're seeing that there, how many times I've dropped things in that one clip, it's more times than I would drop things normally in an entire day. But there we are, no harm, no foul. Let's drop them in. And then we'll leave it to dry, and then I'll be back for my staining stage. Now, the instructions tell you to paint it black and then put brown on it, blah, 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 blah. I don't do that. Most of the time I follow the instructions for this part of the build quite closely, but that is just the wrong advice. And the reason why it's the wrong advice is it's harder. And I'm lazy. I like easy. And what's easier if you're staining wood than using real wood stain? So that's what I do. So I'll stain it with real wood stain, but I'm going to leave that to dry now overnight because it really is the end of my evening, I think, pretty much. And I'll be back to complete that, um, which is nearly done, complete this official part of the build tomorrow. And then I will be starting the more advanced part of the build or the alternative way of doing bridges which I'm very excited about because I've got lots of ideas. I think I'm going to do at least two different types of bridge, maybe more. Um, not going to do the big build like I have mentioned earlier, that's uh, kind of gone by the wayside with time and energy, um, but the research I've done on it won't go to waste, it will appear on the channel at some point and I will be sure to highlight when, when that does happen. Uh, but yeah, let's leave that to dry and I'll see you again in your time very shortly but in my time tomorrow. This is now dried nicely, so what I can do is start to stain it now. In the instructions, as I've said already, it says to undercoat it black and then dry brush it with brown. I just don't like doing that, and I'm not going to do that for this, but if you want to, you can. It will look okay. What I'm going to be doing is making use of this, which is actually proper wood stain, like what you put on the eaves of your house or outside furniture. So the reason I use this is it's a preservative and it's also designed for wood and it's also very, very cheap because you can buy this and it will last you near enough forever. Um, I do not expect to run out of this very soon. Um, and it dries very fast as well, so you can apply this, a couple of coats of this, and you can get it in any colour. Um, and yeah, it just, it's just a better idea, I think, than trying to mix paint and what have you. Use wood stain for wood. Uh, so this is actually... Um, African teak because I want this to be quite a dark looking bridge um, so I'm just going to paint that on all over the all over it as you can see um, and then when that's dry I'll turn it over um, and I will paint the other side and then that'll be done and be ready for weathering and other assorted stuff like putting dirt and whatever I'm going to do to it I haven't decided it at all yet and then we're nearly much done on this basic build. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, when I finish this is I'm uh, going to make a couple of different bridges for different scales in a couple of different techniques, just so you can see some of the options. This, obviously this idea is tied to the bridge. Uh, sorry, not to the bridge, to the tile, so to the river section. However, you don't always want that. 
So um, I'm going to show you how to do ones a bit more flexible maybe than this idea. Um, a little bit different, maybe it's one with brick and not just in wood. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be some, this has been quite a quick video so far I think. Because um, basically most of the effort has been making tiles, which I didn't bother filming because it's exactly the same as last week's. So there we are, that's one coat done and I will be able to let that dry very quickly. It won't take less than an hour, maybe even less than that until it's dry to the touch and then I can turn it over and do the other side. But you can see that that gives me an immediate result. I may even only have to do the one coat for the wood colour, for the stain, um, because I don't really want it to be massively dark, just darker than my other stains that I have. So yeah, easy technique to, to use. If you're going to stain wood, use wood stain. There we are, that'll be enough. That uh, wood stain is dried now, so what I'm going to do is simply glue it down. And to do that, I've decided I'm not going to bother staining underneath because it's not going to be necessary really. So what I'm going to do to do that is just put a little bit of PVA on the bottom, like so, and then set it down in place, like so. And what I'll do is I'll put a weight here and a weight there, and then that will ensure that it sticks correctly and the next thing that we'll be doing on this will be getting the flocking done around the outside along the banks and everything but we'll leave that until that's completely dry and then I'll come back and I'll do the flocking on this and all the other links so now maybe I can actually start my slightly alternative build I'm looking forward to it now that we are running out of time I'm gonna do a more advanced bridge the reason that I'm doing this bridge is that the other one, the official one, is tied to a river section. Uh, and that's cool, it's good, it's not a bad idea. However, you might find that that river section doesn't fit in where you want it to. Or you might find that you want a bridge that doesn't even go over a river section at all. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to go about making a movable bridge that can be set over the top of a river section. And I will probably make one for all three sizes but for ease of videoing, I'll be doing the one probably over this one, mainly on video, uh, and can be set down anywhere on a table and made use of. The other thing to say is that the, these are going to be multi-scale. So while the large river sections are pretty much only going to be for 28 millimeters, I'm doing these ones to be able to be work, used as a footbridge for 28 millimeters, or even a road bridge for 20 millimeters for my chain of command. So let's get started. What we're looking at doing, and I have done a little bit of preparation on this, so what we're looking at doing um, is we're looking at making two types of bridge. Uh, the first one is going to sit like that, so it will have a pillar in the middle. And the second one is going to sit like that, and it's only going to have one arch. Now it may not be an arch bridge, that's just me playing around, but certainly this one is going to be an arch bridge made out of bricks and look quite nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a, a cardboard template and then we're going to use one centimetre, um, the blue XPS, to make the walls um, and we'll, then we'll use cardboard and uh, texture that cardboard to do the uh, bed of the bridge. So let's move that to one side and look at this. The thing you need to consider is angles. If you have too steep an angle coming up onto this bridge, then no miniature in the world is going to sit on it. If you have too shallow an angle, then it's going to take up a huge amount of space and it's going to defeat the object of these bridges want to be able to be put down anywhere. So you need to pick a happy medium of angle which is going to allow you to um, actually <coughs> set this bridge down, sit miniatures on it, not take up too much space. With a little bit of playing around, what I've worked out is I think, and bear in mind how big this is going to be, I think we need to come from about seven centimeters away from the inside of the arch to get it up above high enough, maybe a little bit less than that, um, so that we can actually have a, a, a bed going over the arches um, and you can actually reach the height. It may be a little bit less than that, um, but it's near enough that. So to work that out, and the way that I'm doing that is I'm putting the, visually putting the uh, ruler at an angle that I know roughly is going to be okay for a miniature. And then measuring to see what that is. So it's actually come out at just about five and a half centimeters, not seven. 
Um, apologies, that was my previous measuring being incorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark that there and then on the other side we're also going to come across and we're going to say that we're too close, no we're not, we're going to mark that there, we're very nearly too close to the edge of this but that's going to be fine. So we will now, using this template, mark onto our second template and again doing it in two templates means that um, I can do any type of bridge I want. So if I want to do a bridge around a corner or whatever, I have the correct distances for the river sections. So we now have um, a mark there, which is where that one's going to go to, and we have a mark there. Now we don't want this outer wall to go down to a point. We want it to be about a centimetre high. However, the bed is going to go up from a point, so that's what's happening there. So we'll draw a centimetre up there and a centimetre up there. And then we'll draw a centimetre above and a bit above centimetre, maybe, maybe one and a half centimetres above, 1.2 centimetres above the top of the arch for where that line's going to go. And then we will draw between those two marks and then last but not least we will go we will draw where the road bed's going to be which is going to be just above that arch there enough space for a and that slope there is what we were looking at so that's good and the same again okay and then when that gets above there we will mark where our centimetre height is on that and where our centimetre height reaches, reaches on that and that will give us where our wall is going to be and then we can cut this new template out and we can start to transfer this over to the blue foam. So I will go and get my scissors and we'll cut that out. There we are, I'll go and get my blue scissors and we'll cut that out now and we will be back with the next step very shortly. So we've got this cut out made a couple of adjustments. What I did was I measured some more distances along the top and just made sure that the angles at each side were the same because I was a little bit clumsy in my first measuring so just pay attention to that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer that template across onto my XPS like so using a set of pencil and then I'll cut that out as well. And that then will be done twice and these will serve as the outer walls for my bridge. So we now have two shapes and the good thing is that we know that there are a, a number of sharp edges or near enough sharp edges that we need so what we can do is we can get the safety ruler out and we can use that to, uh, to do these cuts. So let's get a longer length on my Stanley knife and slice down there carefully, there we are, and then slice along the top carefully. You know what? Let's do it inboard. There we are. So slice along there carefully. And then last but not least, actually let's do this vertical one because then this will just pop out. Just very carefully. And last but not least, let's do this side. And then we'll cut the other side out and then I'll be back to show you the next step which is assembling. So, there we are, one shape. I'll cut the other one out and then I'll be back. Just while I've been doing this, I've been doing a technique that I thought I'd share with you because um, you may not be aware of it. So when you're cutting out arches like this, it's not actually the easiest thing in the world to do. If you look, you've got a curve um, and it's hard with a knife I mean, if you've got a hot wire tool, which I do have, but I'm doing this without the hot wire tool because um, not everyone has one. Um, most people are using either Stanley knives or X-Acto blades or kitchen knives or whatever and don't have hot wire tools, so I'm trying to avoid using that for these builds. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to cut 
out to shape like this, particularly in such a delicate section of XPS. So how do I go about doing that and making sure that I'm not going to break the entire piece when I try to remove that section? Simple. I cut vertical lines. So I split this up into sections like so. And as you can see, they just now simply fold out. Done. So that's how I'm doing those arches. I thought I'd just quickly show you that. So we have our wall sections. Now we need to decide just how wide we're going to make it. And then we're going to put this together, put the base on and leave it to dry for a bit. So then we're getting close to the stage where we're going to leave it. So like I've said, I want this to be able to be like a footbridge for 28 millimeter, and that is what this is. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that this should be at least 40, if not 50 millimeters wide. So cocktail sticks. Let's do a quick live experiment to see just how wide a cocktail stick is. Though I do know it's more than 50 centimeters, or five cent more than 50, more than five centimeters. They are including points six centimeters wide, which is perfect. We have a centimeter and a centimeter, and that means that if we push this in and through where we want to, with no point showing, push it through the other one where we want it to be, with no point showing, we're going to end up with a five centimeter walkway, which is perfect for our little necromancer here who wants to get over the water. Can necromancers cross water? What is it that can't cross water? Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a few of these cocktail sticks um, and I'm gonna get some white glue. So I'll gather that because I've sat down without getting that ready. But we'll get some white glue and we will white glue in these cocktail sticks. And I'll put one quite low down here, following the line that we're gonna have where the path is gonna come up along this edge. And we'll put a couple across here. We'll just, I've got loads of cocktail sticks um, and well, that will then be what we'll sit our actual road bed on. So yeah, so I'm going to grab some PVA and uh, then we'll get started on that process. I have a new plate. I bought a new plate. <laughs> so if you remember, we drew the line of where the road is going to go on this bit of cardboard here, on this template here. So what that's going to allow us to do is um, roughly position it and what I might actually do is get my little pin vise which I have right over here and actually use the template to point out or to indicate where my uh, cocktail sticks are going to want to go through so if I drill holes along this line who knew cardboard was so hard to drill through there we are then what we can do is we can put that in place and we can just indicate with the tip of the cocktail stick where we want to have that going through. And then we can come back and very carefully using a rotating motion and do that. Otherwise you'll end up breaking your blue foam. We can make the hole through that's gonna take our cocktail stick. So I'm gonna go do that now. I'm not gonna do it all on camera. I'm gonna put the, uh, mark the points where I want to have the river the, the road section going, and then transfer that over via the stencil onto these river, onto these bridge sections, and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have the uh, two templates now done with the holes all around on both sides. Just be careful that you don't reverse the templates, uh, so make sure that you actually do get the matching up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cocktail stick, we're gonna put some white glue on it like so, I'm gonna push it through the hole, that will put white glue inside the hole hopefully, Push that through, like so, and then push that into the opposing hole, like so, until you feel the pop, the, the end, and then that is the correct width. And sorry if you can hear the puppies outside and Rosie, it's a lovely day, and there's some sunshine being captured outside, which shortly, as soon as I finish doing this, I'm going to go and join in on. So we're going to do the other end, the same, push it through until you can't feel the point. And then a little bit more PVA may be needed there, like so, and then push that in. And that there is what our bridge is gonna look like. So I'm now gonna do that for the next seven um, 
cocktail sticks and then I will leave that to dry and I'll be back with the next step to show you putting on the actual bed of the road. This is now dried and is looking very nice. It's really quite quite solid actually, even though it's not finished. That's a good sign that this is going to be a successful technique to use. So what we're going to do is we're coming along and we've got ourselves some corrugated card. Now this corrugated card corrugates in this direction along the length of the bridge and that's quite important. What I'm doing there is I have marked out and measured the width of the bridge. So where the foot bit is going to be. And what I'm now going to do is get my safety ruler. I'm going to cut that width in a straight line and a little longer than I need. And the reason for that is we're then going to bend that over the top of the bridge and glue it in place. And uh, I'd, I'd rather than try to measure and measure and measure, what I'll do is I'll just have too much and then trim it to size. So we'll cut that way and then we'll cut out across there. So we have a, strength, a strip even of corrugated card. Now we'll take our bridge and we'll be able to slot that in place as you can see like so. A little bit leaning inwards there potentially but that's fine. So we can slot that in place. Let me just get that done. Now that we've got that length correct, after a little bit of playing around and one failed take at the end of the last cut, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this into three strips because otherwise it's not going to work very well at all. So we're going to mark on here where the edge of that support is and then cut across there and then I'll come back in and I'll slot that in and mark where that is and cut across there and then do the third piece again. So I'll take that out. We now have a nice line that we can cut so we'll get the safety ruler again and we'll cut down that line. There we are, nice and easy. So that now will slot in nicely, push down a bit, there we are, we'll slot in nicely there. Perfect. And we will be able to either put, we can put masking tape if you really want to be, or even sellotape, or just wood glue. The next thing we're going to do is come along and measure our next section, which is going to go to that side. So we'll line across there, cut that, and that now will slot in and be the top section of the, of the bridge. And last but not least, we have this section here, which is the final section to do, and we want to cut that around there. So we'll do that and then we'll stick that in place and then we'll come to the final bit which is going to be the texturing and the painting. So let's get our little, our little, our little uh, miniature there and you can see that she fits on that perfectly nicely as a 28 millimeter miniature, it looks like a nice little footbridge. So yeah, let's get that glued together. A bit of tape underneath, I think, will be the best thing to do there to hold that all in place, keep it secure, a bit of tape down the middle and some glue. Um, so I'll get that together and um, bring you back onto camera when I'm about to start gluing. So I've grabbed some masking tape. I've got my glue going onto my plate here. Don't need too much. So what we'll do is we will run our glue, as you can see, on, onto the wood, stick, onto the uh, cocktail stick and the cardboard, just like so. And when that dries, that will give a good solid join there. Bearing in mind, of course, this is not the only thing which is going to hold this bridge together when it's finally done. We have the texturing to do, and that will also provide some structural integrity. 
Not too much there. My glue is very, very liquid right now. It's getting quite warm here, entering the summer. It's going to bring its own challenges for hobbying. There we are. So we're going to press that in place and leave that now to dry. And I will come along with the tape once that's dried to add it just as a reinforcing step. Because right now that's looking fine. So I'm going to leave that and um, I'll come back to that a bit later on. The next style of bridge is a much simpler one um, and is much more flexible. And it can provide the basis for a lot of different styles. And maybe I'll do some, uh, some show you some of that, that idea when I come to it. Uh, so what I've done is I have a bunch of coffee stirrers, which I've just cut up to, again, five centimetre width. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue each of these down to this strip of cardboard, like so. So we're going to glue it down to a cardboard. And that's it. You'll be able to then, when it's glued securely, you'll be able to bend at each of the uh, joints between the slats, if you wish and shape it to whatever shape you want to, to fit over whatever undulation or whatever support you decide to come up with. Um, it can be even just sit flat, completely flat if you want to. And if you want to make it flat, then you can reinforce with more, um, uh, more coffee stirrers going underneath or across the top just to make it a, li a little bit more secure. But I'm gonna do this at the most basic. This is the quickest and easiest way to make yourself a bridge which is gonna be flexible and can be used anywhere on your tabletop. So, I wasn't arranging those randomly and madly just while I was talking. What I'm looking to do is to see roughly how much cardboard do I need uh, and that is roughly how much cardboard I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it just a little bit wider than I've got there. And five centimetres, obviously. Like that. So I will get myself my 90 degrees, which seems to have fallen down. There it is. And we will draw a line 90 degrees up from there. Like so. We will then measure that five centimeters there and five centimeters here and we will then draw that line and that gives us our base that we're going to glue these stirrers to now one of the issues you might have is warping um, and the way that i'm going to resolve that i'll show you but i have i will be building this on top of one of my patented kitchen racks. I've just actually ordered some more of them. They're so useful. There we are. So some cardboard. So what we will do is we will smear PVA glue on that and then set each of these down across it. So let me just grab my, my kitchen rack and then we'll get started. Okay so we have the kitchen rack and what we're going to do is put our PVA over the top of that. And as I say I will also show you at the end of this how I'm going to make sure that we don't suffer from warping. There we are, nice thin coat of PVA, not too much, because if you have too much PVA, then it really will warp. There we are. And now we're gonna place each of these onto our cardboard. fiddly as hell but it's done and you can see that it's already warping so I'm gonna go and grab my little steel bars and I'll be back in a short second this is what I use for flattening it down something like this these are strips of metal which you use for joining two other pieces of wood and they're pretty heavy they're a good weight and what you can do is you can lay one on each edge like that and that will keep it nice and flat it will hold them in place make sure it all glues nicely and it will prevent warping which you don't want so I'm gonna let that to dry and then I'll be back for painting and finishing off that's that that's a second style of bridge done 
while the other bridges are drying and I'm deciding whether I'm going to do a third style or not, I might do. I need to get started on this anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flock next to all of my river sections again that I've made. So there are these two large ones. This one I'm doing now, I'm just doing on camera because this is actually the one that's done with the Luke's APS modeling compound and it does, has turned out okay. It just takes a very long time to dry. So um, maybe I just need to be a bit more patient with, with that um, because I really like the results. Um, so I'll fl flock this with three different colors as per usual of my flocks, which are in the three buckets that you can just about see in shot now. And I will then let them to dry and I'll carry on and do every single one. I've got quite a lot of flocking to get done to finish off all of the sections. I've got all the little ones that I've made so that I can use them for chain of command as well as these bigger ones for 28 millimeters. So yeah, we'll chuck our glue on and then scatter our flock. So I'll just get this other side with the glue painted. There we are, so we've covered that with a good covering of the terrain paint, which is my terrain, which is my mix actually this time, I am using the mix. And then I'll come along and I'll do the three colours, so the kind of mid-range. Um, again, I still haven't got enough of my very, very dark, I need to mix some more up. The very dark flock that I make myself, I need to make some more. But we'll just come along, take a pinch, scatter it over. It's a pretty simple technique. And then what I normally do is I'll come back over and just join it all together with another light application of the mid. So there we are, that's what I'll do for all of the, bro of the uh, river banks. Might just put a little bit more mid down this side, just so that it's got a bit on that bank. I did these banks much too steep in that first batch, as you can see. So that's done, so I'll put that to one side to dry. And what I'll now do is I've got the bridge, which I'm now going to do the same thing to, but I'm also going to put some um, glue and some of the flocks actually on the bridge, because I want it to look a little bit like it's a bit old and a bit decrepit. Um, and that's a good way of doing it. So let's get our paint applied. So what I'll do now is I'll finish off that and I'll carry on doing the little ones and everything. I'll get them all flocked um, and I'll be back. This is probably the final process on this. So I'll be back when all this is done um, and maybe I'll be doing another bridge as well, but I haven't decided yet. So we shall see. This bridge is now dried and is looking pretty good actually. I'm very, very, very pleased with it. There's a couple more things to do on it. However, before we can call it done, this very, very super simple bridge is dry and it is warping as you would have expected. So what I might do actually is stick that onto something just to make it a little more solid, maybe a thin piece of, uh, of um, XPS or something, or maybe I might put some, uh, put, put some rigidity to it. But what you can see is the point I was making when I said about it is you can bend that to any shape you want to and then you can put it in place. So it's a really simple and easy way to get a basic bridge which you could then put onto some piles or put onto a base or leave flat with some su with some support which is what I'll probably do and I'll show you when I do that um, and I will paint that up. But that basically can sit over any gap or whatever and it looks really nice. So that's that. So back to this. What we're going to do now is we're going to use my Green Stuff World cobblestone rollers. Now I have the 15 millimeter one here because as I said this is going to be used for both 15 and 28 and it will just make it look like it's got very small cobbles for the 28 millimeter but it will be fitting in correctly for the 15. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this out and we're going to use the cobblestone uh, roller to get a nice cobblestone effect going over the top. So I'll pop some music on and if there's anything for me to interject I will but otherwise you'll just be able to watch this at fast speed. There we are, that was nice and quick. So what we can now do is we'll just get rid of this bit up here because it's not gonna be needed at all. I've got way too much as I often end up with, but I'd rather have too much than too little. So we'll get rid of that. We'll maybe use that again in a second for something else. And we'll carefully peel this off the bot, off this uh, little mat that I've got, which works very nicely. Now, I've said this before on the channel, I'll say it again, and I'm sure I'll say it again after this. Yeah, look at that, don't even need to clean it, brilliant. I'm sure I'll say it again after this. Clay does not adhere, okay? It is not sticky. It will dry, but when it dries, it will then delaminate, unless you put some glue. And wood glue, PVA, is perfect for that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to smear some PVA glue over the top over the road bed. So we'll just stick that in. And I've got my brush here, and I won't put it in my tea because, well, that would be funny if I did, but I remembered. <laughs> so we have our PVA in there, so that will now stick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this down over the top, and this is where we hope that my plan is gonna work because I'm gonna fold that in and press it lightly down in, as you can see, like so. And on the other side as well, like so. And I have a tool here which I can use to press it down into the corner, get it all nicely in. And once we've got that nicely in and pressed in, hopefully without smudging any of the details, I've got a knife on the end of this tool and I'm gonna be able to cut across like so, there we are. And we will be reusing this very, very shortly because it's not only going to be the cobblestones that I'm doing in clay on this bit of the model. I'm sure you've probably guessed, but I'm gonna do bricks as well on the sides. So what I'm gonna do now is just trim down the rest of this clay as carefully as I can so I will go back to fast speed again and get this done and you can watch and hold your breath with me because this is going to be quite fiddly I think. how much of that you caught because of my arms and hands getting in the way so let me just quickly rotate the camera a bit and zoom in and you can see what that looks like so there we are that is going to look wonderful i'm really really pleased with how that came out and actually was a lot easier than i feared it might be so i'm going to pop that clay there in my box i have a sealed box that i keep my clay in it says ruska salata which is a favorite salad of ours here. So it's a Russian salad. I'm gonna let that to dry and I will be back to finish off once it's gone off a little bit. Um, and maybe it will be tomorrow morning um, and I'll come, off, come back to do the next stage, um, which is gonna be bricks on the wall and on the sides, maybe. I might change my mind. I change my mind a lot. The final thing that I really need to do is fill in under here, which is gonna be done with card, with, with, um, card or paper, uh, but I'll definitely do that tomorrow once this has dried. So there we are, there we have a lovely looking roadbed ready for me to paint and detail. I had every intention of coming back to this last night and finishing off the, um, doing the walls, but that just didn't happen for uh, various reasons, one of which I was working like quite late on the, uh, on the vlog and uh, it just got too late. So what I'm gonna do now is, this has dried nicely, you can see it's gonna be a very nice little texture. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll out the spare that I had from yesterday. I'm going to use my 15mm Dutch bricks roller and I'm going to put the bricks all over the walls and the top and dressed onto the inside as well. So I'll get that done. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to run the camera for it because it's basically the same thing as you saw in the previous clip where I put the, um, the cobbles down. Um, but yeah, I'll bring you back at the end when I've finished. Well, that was anything but simple. I've managed to get the sides on, and I'm quite pleased with how they look. There's a little bit of roughness there, but the, I tried to put the top on. First of all, using the bricks, didn't like it. Then I came along with a different roller, um, and didn't like that either. <laughs> so I took all of the clay off the top, and what I'm gonna do, simply enough, is I'm gonna get cardboard, and I'm gonna glue cardboard on top, like so, as a capstone. And that is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to come along. I've got lots of these that just need trimming down, cut the mill. Um, and I'll just make sure there's plenty of PVA on the top there. And I will glue these capstones on. And that will then finish off the top of the wall. So I'll get that done. I thought this would only take me a few minutes and it's taken me far longer than I expected. However, that's sometimes how things go. So yeah, we shall glue these capstones on like that. And then I'll let that dry and then I'll be painting it later. Doing this Sunday morning. And yes, I am slightly behind in my aim. I should have been a lot further along than this on this build. This week has been busy. But then what week of mine isn't busy? So it's not really an excuse. Should be used to it by now. There we are. So we will, I'll weight those down as well so they don't curl once it's dried. So yeah, let's get the other side done. A bit of PVA across the top. Now to go weight that down. This is now dry and so it's ready for painting. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put black paint onto the cobbles and onto the top of the wall and the inside of the wall. So I have my black house paint and a simple brush and this is not going to be the final colour obviously uh, as always it's going to be dry brushing or whatever but it is going to allow me to fill in those gaps um, and cover over and make it give it some depth and also it will allow me to fill in the uh, where you, the blue foam is, is actually not covered by anything inside. Now this build has basically not gone exactly how I wanted it to because of time so if another time it would have been better to have done more and dry clay and done these top um, square top ones out of the air dry clay as I attempted I just run out of time it's been a bit of a hectic week and uh, haven't got, had the time to do the things I want to do however I'm still pleased with how it looked and maybe I'll do another one at some point which will be better with less rush so I'll get this painted up let the black dry and then we'll come back for the for the rest of the painting process, the top of which is going to be pretty obvious, going to be dry brushing it down with greys, maybe some other colours as well, put a bit of flock on, make it a bit of interesting, um, and then we'll do the we'll do the, the brickwork in uh, red ready colour, because I like that, I like red bricks. So yeah, I'll get that done, and then I'll be back in a bit to show what it looks like and do the next step. It's not very long afterwards, a couple of minutes, and the black paint has dried. So what I'm now going to do is come in with this lovely colour that I like so much, this rich reddy brown, and I'm going to paint this over the bricks. So, let's 
just got a little bit more of a mix in that. There we are. So this will give a really nice highlight and also will give a nice contrast for when I do my next stage, which is going to be applying um, flocks and what have you once I've finished the painting. Um, I haven't forgotten about filling in the gap here. I just wanted to get the painting started because that's going to be basically painted black. Um, so I'll do that probably as part of the final steps uh, when, I'm, when I'm finishing off. So yeah, I love this colour. It really works really nicely for brick. Really nicely for brick. A little bit of a tip there. If you want to do a, a kind of distressed aged brick look, do more of a dry brush and you get whiteness and what have you. I'm not going for that look on this build, but you saw just how easy that was to achieve. Just a little bit less paint, a heavy overbrush, and you end up looking like you've got quite old distressed bricks. So, onwards. So there we are, that's that red colour on, so I'll let that to dry and then maybe come back and do another coat, but I think that should be sufficient for me then to come along and finish off with another dry brush over the top. So yes, that's looking very good. Right, let's have a look at this underneath these arches quickly. So what I've got here is some black paper. Um, and what I'm going to do is quite simply mark the width that I want to need to cut it to using the actual um, bridge as a template because that's the easiest way to do it. This pencil isn't working, that's obviously an old bit of lead. Get some new lead in, there we are. So yes, mark the width that I need using the actual bridge as a template and then cut that out. So let's get my ruler and we'll cut along that width. Could use scissors, but it's just as easy to use a knife. So next, what we'll do is we'll turn this upside down and we'll fold that in like so. And this is gonna be a quick and dirty fix, which potentially you could enhance by putting some more of the air dry clay underneath, but you don't need to. This will just make it shaded so you can't see the blue foam and you can't see the rest of the uh, of the wood bits and what have you. So again, we will mark using the pencil where to cut and we'll cut it. And this will be glued in place just using PVA uh, and I'll clamp it in place so that it doesn't shift because it might do. What I will also do is I will get some dressmaking pins and pin that through certainly here and here in, and that will also come through into this next one. And that will also help it to have some strength and rigidity. So I will cut the next one out and then get my glue and I'll be back in a second to show you how I will fix it all in place. Okay, so I'm back with my PVA on my plate and my dressmaker's pins. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the PVA in the arch, like so, obviously. I bet you guessed that was what was coming. So I'll put some PVA there and on the other side. And also, straight away, we'll put some on this next one because this is gonna be fitted in together as one because of the width of the dressmaking pin. We'll probably have to not rely on those for our strength, to be honest. So anyway, we've got that. So now we will fold these in place, like so. And like I say, all you're doing here is you're trying to give a shadow so that it's not, um, it's not obvious what the construction's made of, so you're just filling in the gap. So we will take our dressmaker's pin here and push it into the blue foam that way, being very careful that it goes in flat and doesn't poke out the top or the bottom. There we are, so that's held that one in place. And then we'll get another one and we'll put it in over here. Okay, so that's that. Then we'll get the next 
new shape, the next piece of card, and put it in there. There we are. And once more, we will get some dressmaker's pins, and we will push it in there, and in there. And that will hold those ends in place at the very least. And next we're going to want to do something which is going to secure it in the middle. Now I think that the best thing might actually be clamps. No, that's not going to work because it's at an angle, because it's sloped. But that might just actually stick itself. So what I'll do is I'm just going to put some dressmaking pins in to hold it in place, but they'll be pulled out later. So these aren't permanent. These ones will stay in all the time, maybe. But these ones aren't permanent. They're just to hold it in place while the glue dries. So I'll put one on each side and then we're done. So that's how I'm doing the lining so that when it's up, you've got um, a black shape rather than it being, um, rather than it being blue foam. So there we are. The next step is dry brushing. So I have my two greys that I normally use. I have my darker grey and my lighter grey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply those in the way I always do. So I've got my brush here, got a little bit of kitchen ro roll here, kitchen paper, to enable me to um, take most of the paint off. And then what we'll do is we will apply that relatively heavily. It's more than a dry brush. I'm looking for here so I don't want to take quite as much off because we want to bring out the um, texture that we've got from this these lovely rollers so I'll get that done very very carefully and I'll leave the camera rolling and you can watch as it works as it develops So that's a good first coat. We'll let that dry and I'll come back and do a lighter one in a minute. Next up for the bricks while that grey layer is drying. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and a, thin, and a wide brush to wash over all of the bricks. This is only the first wash I'm going to apply because I'm also going to do some green. Um, and I don't want it to be too heavy so I don't overwhelm that nice red colour I've got. But it will give it that little bit more definition and it will make a big difference to how the bricks will look. So just a touch of Agrax Earthshade over the top of this and you can see just how quickly that is changing and is making a difference to how the bricks look. Excellent. That's looking really nice. I'll let that to dry and I'll be back a bit later on to do the next process on the walls. Just lift that up so that you can see in the light. Looking really nice. So now we're going over for a very light, light brush of the paler grey on the stones. And not all over it, just in places, just to give it a little bit of a worn look potentially doing more stripy lines so that it looks more like dust maybe than actually part of the road surface. I do have weathering powders but I'm not going to use them on this model because I want this to be using more basic techniques but this is the time when potentially you would be using weathering powders as well. So we're not going to do too much and then what we'll do is as well with this lighter is we'll just catch the edge of these uh, the stones on top of the wall because they will be ca would be catching the, the sunlight and so doing that is making them look a little bit more realistic just a little bit of on the edge like so
that's done paint wise I think uh, we'll come back with some more washes and some flocks and what have you when it's all dried so a little bit later on I woke up this morning not a blue soul but what I did thinking you know what I cut some corners with this card I wasn't happy with how it looked when I did it it probably was quite obvious while I was filming that I was feeling a little bit uncertain about it and I've come to take the pins out and you can see that yeah this is just not going to work and I'd woken up this morning thinking, again, still not a blues song, thinking about how I was going to uh, make this a lot better. Um, and I'm going to do the original plan because the air dry clay does actually dry very quickly. And I think that that's actually going to work quite nicely. And it's not going to take, and it's not going to delay me very much. Now I really truly wish that I'd done this last night. So the lesson here is do it right first time. Don't cut corners because now there is a chance that I won't have time and it will be half done for the video uh, which I need to finish today and, and edit today because it needs to go out tomorrow to fit in with my schedule however I think I'll get it done I think it'll be fine so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cardboard which just didn't work um, and not everything always works and I'm going to get some more air dry clay going to roll it out and I'm going to put that in the curve and then leave that to dry and then that should work much better because I because it's going to be pretty hidden I don't have to worry too much about smudging the detail but with air dry clay and those rollers you can press actually quite hard before it starts to really lose the detail and because this is going to be underneath the model um, I don't have to worry about that quite so much and I can maybe cover that up with some flocks and what have you when I come to it so I'm going to get myself ready. I've got my rollers here. I've got my air dry clay here. I just need to cut some out and get my um, get the rolling board and what have you. Um, and then I will show you what it looks like when when I'm starting to actually put it into place. So there's no point in showing me rolling it again because you've seen that several times. So I'll be back very shortly to uh, to show you that step, and then we will leave that to dry, and hopefully it will be done before the photo shoot. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Roll it out one length of air dry clay using my 15mm Dutch bricks template. What I'm now going to do is get my PVA again, because PVA is what you want here, and run that bead there, but down over the arch, or underneath the arch as it were, rather. And then we'll spread that around with the brush. If I had one to hand, which I don't, so I'll spread it around my finger, which is bad practice, don't do that. But it'll be fine. Just make sure that you take the PVA off your fingers before you touch anything it can stick to. There we are. So PVA is in there. So what I'm going to do is just one of these arches and then I'll do the other one off camera because it'll be basically the same. I'm going to need to re-roll my um, clay. And what we'll do is we'll drop it down on top like that and then press it in like so so that it follows the contours and if you find it dipping you can put your, you can lift it up and hold it in place like that there we are so that's that and as you can see there's some small smudging going on but it's okay I will be able to if I really wanted to I could easily cover that up using a uh, flock or something like that so if I zoom that in you'll see that that is nicely shaped now so what we then do is we then get a tool to actually trim the clay so I'll just grab that okay I've grabbed a, a tool to trim the clay easy for me to say and what we'll do here is we will cut this across here like so And then we'll do the same on this side. And now we can finally position this in and trim down this side. And what I may find myself having to do is actually sand down very carefully once this is dry later on today so that it sits flat but other than that I think that is going to work very very much better than the card and it is worth the small amount of extra effort actually indeed I think it's easier to have done this 
and I think I was silly not to do it the first time because <coughs> that is going to look so much better when it's um, when it's finished than a bit of horrible old card. And as it happens, I don't have to repress my uh, re-roll my um, clay because I've got enough there to do the next arch. So I'll get that done off camera because it'll be the same process. We'll put some glue in, we'll put it in place, we'll cut it to shape, then we'll fit it, and then and then I'm going to leave that to dry, and then I'll paint it, and then it will be. Then it will be done. <laughs> Here's hoping it dries. It should do. It's going to be about 30 odd degrees today, so I think it will probably dry even by lunchtime. So I might probably check it then. Uh, but yeah, cool. Very pleased. Happy that I woke up thinking that, so I wasn't too distraught when my uh, paper tore as I was trying to remove it. Excellent. Just got back from town. Had a really nice lunch, and this is now totally dry and ready for painting, which is brilliant and is so much better. I mean, just goes to show. Don't cut corners. Do the right thing, do what you actually want, and if it takes a bit longer than you have, then don't worry about that, because you end up with a better result. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back in with the same paint as I did before, uh, and paint all of this brickwork again, and also over the little bit that's kind of like bled over into the front, which is absolutely fine, I don't mind that at all. So we're just going to put that nice ready brown all over this. And then I'll let that dry, which won't take very long, and I'll come in with the wash in the same way as I did before. Um, just to remind you that that was the um, Agrax Earth shade that I've put over the top. Um, and then I'll finally be ready for the finishing off. And it's now Monday afternoon, and this is going live Tuesday, so again I've cut myself nice and fine. But hey, I always do, even when I think that something's going to be really, really easy and get it done on time and early and what have you. I always end up managing to use all the available time. <laughs> very, very rarely I finish one of these early. Um, so yeah, I'll do that, finish the painting. I've also had noticed that I'd missed some of the painting on the ends, which obviously needs touching up a bit, so that's done as well now. So yeah, so I'll finish painting that, and then I will do the wash, and then I'll probably bring you back in for when I'm doing the final detailing a bit later on. Very, very pleased, though. very pleased I did that. Now, late on Monday night, with this video going live Tuesday morning, <laughs> I'm now coming to the final stages of this build, finally, of the advanced one. Um, and I am also going to put some paint on this just to make it a little nicer. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some green scummy kind of lines using the Vallejo green wash. Let me get that in focus and in shot. There we are. So I'm gonna put a fair amount of that onto my dry palette, get a brush and wet that down quite a lot so that it's even thinner than the thin wash is as it comes out of the bottle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do scumminess around the bottom of these here, so where you would have expected it to be a bit green and scummy. This will dry nice and quickly so I can move on to the next step and hopefully get this done tonight. So also need to photograph this. Didn't expect this build to run quite so tight to time, but then that's how things go sometimes, isn't it? A bit more. Oh, that squirted. And we're also going to just in the underneath on the off chance that you can see that on the gaming table, but it's nice. I'll know it's there and I'll know it's done properly. So we'll do that there and then we'll come back and scum up this side. There we are. Beautiful. So that is the green wash that has made our river bridge look a little scummy around the base, which is just what we want. So next up, we're going to look at some flocks and we're going to look at sticking on uh, old paintbrush bristles. So I will gather my flocks and we'll have you together and I'll be back in a second. So the idea here is we're going to paint some PVA along these 
edges here and maybe up here as well. And I'm just going to put some dry, some, some old paintbrush bristles, stick them to the side of the bridge. And also I will um, put some flocks, some green flocks, just to make it look a little bit more like, uh, like, like algae and fungi and what have you. But uh, mainly what we're doing here is the old bristles from paintbrushes, which is a classic technique and it works really well. So I happen to have previously prepared for a previous build some paintbrush bristles and I put a bit of uh, just some masking tape around the base just to hold them together so it's a bit easier for me to cut because the full length is going to be way too big on this build. It's just going to, going to outsize. So what we'll do is we will take ourselves a little tuft and get our sharp scissors and snip that off and press it in place. Just like that. There we are. No more complex than that. One thing you could do here is um, actually put a little base. So you could actually put a base here and extend it out slightly, maybe put some rocks around it so it looks like what that's where the piles have been driven when they've made the bridge. Um, I decided against that because I want this to be as flexible as possible and I don't want to be constraining myself really to where I can place the bridge. But you could do that if you want to and that might actually enable you to do this sort of detailing a little better. So I'm just going to go along now and apply these bristles. I'll put some music on. I'll be back in a second for the next step after this. Okay, so I've put enough bristles on that I'm happy on this side um, and I'll do the other side off camera because it'll be basically the same thing. And what I'm then going to do is I actually have a shop board, I know, curses, but I just decided that's what I'm going to use for no real good reason. Shop bought flock and I'm going to sprinkle that over the top of these br bristles so um, it will fall straight back into the pot when I knock it. So I don't need to put the paper down. And we're just going to put some green just at the base there maybe a little bit more on that one done and that now has a really nice effect of bristles of brushes and flock to make it look like there's some greenery going on and I think that is going to be this bridge done that's the final pro final step this has turned out very well I'm very very pleased so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other side now and then I will call it a day and we will call that bridge a completion. I'm going to leave it to dry for a little while first because I don't want that PVA to uh, and those things to fall off before I do the other side. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you how I'm going to paint this to make it look a little nicer and maybe put a few bits of flock or what have you on it. So I'll just gather the tools and materials for that and then we will finish this off and then I think the video is done. Hey, hey we are made it. For this I'm going to be using Windsor & Newton um, Galeria Acrylic and it is the raw umber which I really really like for this type of effect. I use it a lot. And we're going to put it on not very thick at all. We're going to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull until you get good lines so it looks and it gets that wooden texture going across your planks. And it's as simple as that. So you put a small amount on your brush and then you make it go as far as you possibly can. It's ideal for sort of tight, I was going to really swear then, so and so like myself. And this will also fill in those gaps between the uh, planks so there's no cardboard showing. And also because we're doing it with such a small amount of paint it is not going to influence the warping which we're still suffering from. Now I decided against making any piles or any additional things for this because I quite like just how flexible it is and how I can basically put this down anywhere on a table and I've got a bridge and I don't need to fanny around. So that's done, that's as quick as that. So we've got ourselves a little bit of a, of a brown bridge. It looks a lot better in like, how, what, what, 30 seconds? 
And then I'm going to dip a little bit of the uh, PVA and put a little bit of the shopboard flock on again. And immediately you've got a bit of character for this bridge. And there we are. A little bit of character for the bridge makes it look a little bit more kind of like old and used. And that is done. So that bridge there took me in total about four minutes of effort. Cut your cardboard, cut up your coffee stirrers, glue them on, leave it overnight, come back the next day and a heavy overbrush of your paint and it's done. I mean, what a simple bridge. So we'll call that a day. I'll wrap that up now and I will be back in a second in your time to finish the video and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Ah, oh, there you are. Uh, a longer video than I expected it to be, particularly because actually I spent far more time than shown in this video because I made so many of the little 15 millimeter scale and the much smaller rivers, which you'll see in photographs in a very short while because I'll be posting them onto the end of this video. Uh, so yeah, it's been a, a big build. It's taken me a lot longer than I expected, as you can tell as well from the fact that I've only just finished, literally two, three minutes ago, I finished doing the final bits on the bridge. Um, but I've really enjoyed it. I'm really pleased. And I tell you what, it's given me a newfound love and potentially an addiction to using those green stuff world rollers that has just looked so good. And it took what was looking for quite a long time, rather uninspiring, and it's turned it into something wonderful, which I'm going to be really liking to put down on my tabletop. I hope that that's inspired you as well and maybe given you some ideas for how to, easy it is to make bridges. Uh, it certainly doesn't have to take you an hour and a half a video to make one. It should probably have only been a 20 minute video in this, but uh, hey, I do like to chatter, as you can tell. I'll wrap up, I'll shut up, I'll stop talking and I'll let you get to the pictures now. And I'll say thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you watching them and I hope that you do stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well out there.